where everything's got to have a beginning, you know. Excellent breakfast this morning. Good coffee, scrambled eggs, homemade marmalade, <laughs> and all nicely served too. Little woman does it all herself. Amateurish, there should be a proper staff. Well, excellent lunch too. What? Corn beef? But very well disguised corn beef. It had a red wine in it. And then Mrs. Ralston promises to make us a pie for tonight. Well, yes. But by the way, do you know that these radiators are not really hot? I will certainly speak about them. <coughs> Very comfortable beds, too. At least mine was. I, I, I hope uh, yours was, too. Well, it was adequate. You know, I don't quite see why the, the best bedroom had to be given to that uh, rather cruel <coughs> young man. Well, got here ahead of us. First come, first serve. What? From the advertisement, I got to understand that this was a totally different place altogether. A much larger place with a wonderful writing room, bridge, and other amenities. Regular old Tabby's delight. <coughs> I beg your pardon. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, I, 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 I can't see what, what you mean. Uh, no, I shan't stay here very long. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't think you will. <laughs> I think that is a very peculiar man indeed. Mentally unbalanced, I shouldn't wonder. You think he's escaped from a lunatic asylum? Oh, I should be surprised at all. Guys? Yes? Will you shovel the snow away again from the back door, please? Oh, come in. Yes. Uh, let me give you a hand. Give oh. me some exercise for me. You must have exercise, Well, Thank you. Come, come. I gather our host has had to cook the lunch. Oh, all very haphazard and amateurish, I must say. You know, there should be a proper staff of servants. Oh, not very easy to get nowadays, is it? No, indeed. The lower classes have no idea of their responsibilities whatsoever. Poor old lower classes. Oh, I gather you are a socialist? Oh, no, I wouldn't say that. I'm not a wretch. <laughs> Just pay and pay. But I don't take much interest in politics. I live abroad. Oh, and uh, conditions are much easier, I suppose. <coughs> well, I don't have to cook and clean, as I gather most people have to do in this country. Oh, this country has gone sadly downhill. Not what it used to be at all, you know. I had to sell my house last year. Everything was so difficult. Oh, hotels and guest houses are easier. Well, yes, they do solve some of one's problems. Are you here in England for long? Depends. I've got some business to see to. And when it's done, I shall go back. France? No. Italy? No. Um, would you mind not having that all quite so loud? I find it rather distracting when I'm trying to write letters. Do you? <coughs> if you don't particularly want to listen to it just now, this is my favorite music. There's a writing table right in there. Oh, I know, but it's much warmer in here. Much warmer? I agree. Bloody old bitch! Oh. <laughs> oh, hello. Wherever I go, that woman needs to hunt me down. And then she just glares at me, positively glares. Oh, turn it off, please. Why? It's out of purpose. <laughs> what purpose? Tactics, boy. Oh, you mean her? At all. I wish she'd go away from here. In this? <laughs> Not a hole. Yes, but, but when the snow melts, eh? Oh, when the snow melts, lots of things may have happened. <coughs> I know. But snow is rather lovely, isn't it? So peaceful and pure. It makes one forget things. It doesn't make me forget. How oh, yes, you sound? I was thinking. What sort of thinking? Ice on a bedroom truck. Children's raw and bleeding. One thin rugged blanket. And a child shivering with cold and fear. Oh dear. Sounds too, too grim. What is it? A novel? You didn't know I was a writer, did you? Are you? <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you. Actually, I'm not. Mr. Ralston can't come to the telephone just now. This is Mrs. 
Mrs. Uh, Ralston. Uh, uh, you and your husband uh, must not be too trusty, you know. Uh, have you any references for these uh, guests of yours? Is that usual? I only thought they, they just came. <laughs> well, uh, you must have some idea of people who sleep under your roof. <laughs> Take me, for example. I come in saying uh, that my car has run into a street. <laughs> What do you know about me? Nothing. I could be a thief, a robber, a madman, a fugitive from justice, or even a murderer. Yes, you know just as little about your other guests, you see. Well, um, as far as Mrs. Boyle goes, oh, it is far too cold in the library. I think I should have to sit here and write my letters. Oh, Mrs. Ralston, is your husband about? I'm afraid the pipes of the downstairs cloakroom are frozen. Oh, dear. What an awful morning. First the police, now the pipes. The police? The police, did you say? Yes, sir. Um, they just ran up to say they're sending some sergeant or inspector down here. And I don't think he'll ever get here, though. Hello, is anything the matter? I hear the police are on their way here. Why? Oh, that's quite all right. Nobody can get in here today. The roads have all backed up. The drifts are five feet deep. Nobody can come in. Uh, Mr. Ralston! Mr. Ralston! Yes? Are you Mr. Ralston? Yes? Thank you, sir. Detective Sergeant Trotter, Bloodshed Police. Can I get these keys off and store them somewhere? Uh, come around that way to the front of the house. That way, I'll meet you there. Thank you, sir. I suppose this is what we pay our police force for, to go around the countryside and join winter sports? Why did you send me to the police, Mr. Ralston? Oh, but I didn't. Who is that man? Where did he come from? You may or may not believe it, but he's a policeman. A policeman skiing. Uh, this is Detective Sergeant Trotter. Good afternoon. Oh, but you can't be a sergeant. You're much too young. I'm not quite as young as I look, man. Uh, sergeant, uh, we would store your skis under the stairs if you would please follow me, sir. Um, excuse me, Mr. Rawson, but may I use your telephone? Well, of course, Mr. Rawson. He's very attractive, don't you think? I always think the police are very attractive. No brains. <coughs> You can see that at a glance. Hello? Hello? Mrs. Ralston, your telephone is dead. Quite dead. Oh, but it was all right about half an hour ago. Oh, the snow must have snapped the lines. <laughs> so, so we're quite cut off now. Quite cut off. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? <laughs> I don't see anything to laugh at. No, indeed. All right. Let me turn to business, Mr. Ralston. Mrs. Ralston, uh, if you want to see us alone, we can go into the library. No, no, that would be necessary, sir. It would save time if everyone is present. If I may sit here? Yes, please. Thank you. <coughs> oh, do please hurry up and tell us. What have you done? Nothing. Oh, it's nothing of that kind, Mrs. Ralston. It's something quite different. It's more a matter of police protection, if you understand me. <coughs> police protection? It relates to the death of Mrs. Leo. Mrs. Maureen Lear of 24 Culver Street, London, West 2, who was murdered yesterday, the 15th instant. You may have heard read about the case. Yes, yes. I did hear it on the wireless. The woman was strangled. That's right, man. Now, the first thing I want to know is that if you were acquainted with this Mrs. Lear. No, yeah. never heard of her. Actually, uh, you may not have heard of her under the name of Lear, because Lear wasn't a real name. She had a police record and the fingerprints were on fire, so we were able to identify her without any difficulty. Her real name was Maureen Stanley. Stanley? Her husband was John Stanley, who resided at Longridge Farm, not very far from here. Longridge Farm? 